Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here as ever, especially because today is a little bit of an experimentation day. Today we are going to try and make Damascus out of copper and nickel. Now this isn't called Damascus, this is called Makume Gane. I've never tried it before, but we are going to be trying it today. Thank you for joining me. Let's get right in to stacking up some copper and nickel. But first, we're gonna light the forge. And now we can have a look at our materials. We have nickel, that's what nickel looks like, it's very shiny. And we have copper. In science class, they used to describe it as salmony pink. I got them cut into two inch squares, 50 mil by 50 mil, and hopefully they're nice and accurate. Because of course, what we need to do is just like when we're making Damascus steel with two different alloys of steel, we need to stack these pieces up to form our different colored layers. Now because it, whoa, do you see that? <laughs> now because this is foreign territory, I'm gonna put a big emphasis on making sure that my parts are clean. And for that to happen, I'm gonna clean down this little surface. And I'm also going to clean down my parts. We'll do that with a quick lick of acetone. Flip them all over. More acetone. And now we're gonna begin stacking them up. I think that's enough for the first attempt because this stuff is rather expensive. So first and foremost, we're just going to see if we can treat it much like normal Damascus steel. So we'll see if we can fusion TIG weld across the seams, see if that holds up to then heating up before we actually fuse the pieces together. Here we go. Needs to be hotter. That was 50 amps and nothing happened. Let's try 70. Slight bit of fusion. We'll try 90 amps. Oh, that's a little better. Let's try hotter. I'm going to do a big jump. 120. Oh, there we go. That's much nicer. So we got some good fusion together there at the 120. So I think we'll do that. All four corners, all four sides. Should keep it together while we heat it. I know lots of you are screaming right now, but this is a one, two, three block that I dropped a few times. So it's no good anymore. I don't know why we caught it on fire. There we go. So now we've got this billet stacked up. We need to put it in the fire. The trick is, the forge is hotter than the melting temperature. Oh boy. Now, as I've said, I've never tried this before, but the basic understanding I have of what it is that we're trying to do here is get those pieces of copper and nickel so close to the melting temperature that when we hammer them or press them together, they'll fuse, just like with Damascus. Except I think that we're a lot more likely to melt these things than we are with Damascus pieces. So what I think I'm gonna do is just like when we heat treat a big sword, we're gonna make the heat of the fire a little less aggressive with this piece of tube. So now that the tube is hot, into it we go with our stack of copper and nickel. Hopefully we don't melt it. I'm gonna leave this camera pointing right at it in case we do. Please not make a puddle in the forge. Oh, there's a green flame. Can you see that green flame? You can't see the green flame. Okay, but I think we might be coming up to temperature. So it's starting to become a very dull red, just slightly incandescent. I think I'm waiting for the surfaces to become just a little glazy. Okay, it's coming up to a little bit of a light orange, which is soon gonna be approaching the temperature at which we melt that copper. Let's have a feel with this little stick here. It doesn't feel tacky at all. And obviously, I don't know what I'm doing, but I guess I would feel it was a little tacky if it was ready for the fuse, for the weld. Right, I'm gonna change lenses and we're gonna give this a go. So it's still a light orange, we're gonna give it some light tap. It's a very glazed surface. Gently start giving it some light touches with the power hammer. It's now starting to turn to a dull orange. Let's see what we can see from that. It's difficult to tell just from looking at it whether it's fused. I certainly know from my experience at Damascus, this doesn't look, you know, this, this doesn't look abnormal even if it was fused. I'm just gonna take an aggressive rasp stroke just on the sides here and see if it comes apart at all by doing that. So I've not noticed any signs of it coming apart from an aggressive stroke. Let's try and poke a chisel in it. Well, it's certainly breaking apart the layers. It's not coming apart quite as easily as I'd imagine it would if it hadn't taken to any degree. I think it's solid enough to try and keep working it. And I think that that temperature was not necessarily too cold because I have a sneaking suspicion that it would move a lot more if it weren't fused at all. So I'm gonna rasp off this corner and we'll go straight back in the forge. But I'm not even concerned about the tube this time. It seemed like it was hot enough to not have to worry. Okay, I think we're about ready. Moment of truth. What happens if we turn it sideways? Wow! 
It looks like it stayed together. That's amazing. Right, let's drop it back in the fire and heat it up again. How cool is that? It kind of lights up in this weird way, and I can't tell if it's the flame or the copper doing something weird, but it's almost glistening. And then it stopped, right, as I described it. There we go, look at that. Right, now let's try working it sideways a good deal. Wow, it feels really homogenous. This is copper and nickel, and we just fused it together. This is insane. It looks like sadly some slag from the bottom of the forge got stuck to it while I was hammering, and it made that big impression. I think a cleaner forge floor would be very handy for this operation. So I put a block of steel on the floor. Oh, and I missed it. I will heat it up on there, see if that keeps it a little cleaner. Right, let's forge it out some more. Uh-oh, that's not good. Maybe I'm being a little too aggressive. So I took that piece of steel out of the fire, it was actually making it pick up even more debris from it. And instead, since I don't have any stainless, I just thrown a brick in there so at least it stays off the dusty floor. Heats up really fast, now it's got some heat in it. So a testament of how well it's held together is going to be twisting it. This falls apart when we twist it, we know it's not very good. And it hasn't stuck together and we've got to change something up. If it stays together, then it could be a little bit more promising. So I'm going to get on here with a wrench and start twisting. Right, let's take another heat. It certainly stiffens up a lot as it cools. Oh no, it's not twisting in the middle now, it's only twisting at the top where it's mushing over from the wrench. All this material is just smushing and it won't hold its shape well enough to be able to twist it. It certainly looks super crusty. It doesn't look like it's very strongly held together and the edges, they just, they don't blend in the same way it blends in with steel when you forge weld the steel. Let's try some more twisting. Hoop, camera in the way. No, it just mushes it again. Oh boy, that's ugly. Let's try it one last twist. No! Oh. Uh oh. Oh no, just rounded it. Oh well. <laughs> that is crusty. It's all right, let's flatten it down. So that is attempt number one of Makumegane. And uh, how do I feel it went? Is the best way I can describe it. Very, very crusty. So I have no idea if we're gonna get anything from it. It's possible that it's just the outside layers where they didn't fuse, because of course, once we twist it, all those outside layers are surrounding the periphery of the material. And hopefully that means that once we grind this thing, we can expose solid fused material in the center. And that is the hope. That is pretty freaking awesome. Copper and nickel, it's actually only gone and fused together. It looks awesome. In fact, it's just so awesome that now that we have some validation on our process, we're gonna heat the forge up. And we are gonna make up one big, glorious, expensive stack of copper and nickel. Let me tell you, nickel is expensive. Holy granola, that stuff is not cheap.
we've now got the scale cleaned off. We've got it forged out. And so now that means that it is time to open it up and see how the pattern looks inside. Ow! Oh my goodness! Oh yeah. That's kind of cool, huh? Kind of cool, kind of cool, yeah, yeah. I think that'll work. I was terrified. I was concerned that it only fused because we had copper the first time. But I really think it's done it. I think it's together. And look at how beautiful that pattern looked. I think I found that the key is to work a little bit on each side. It's not to work a lot from one side, but just take a few blows and then turn it. A few blows and turn it. So I have this full bar and I am shocked and surprised that it wasn't cracked the whole way through. But the pattern on this piece is just incredible as you've seen. At this stage it's on biased W's which means stacking this up four ways into a square will make an explosion pattern. We're gonna leave that for another day. I'd love to hear what it is that you'd like me to make from this piece of Makume Gane. I've also got these cool offcuts. Look, it's my hair. And of course attempt number one, that beautiful piece of flat stock of uh, Makume twist. So drop me a comment and let me know what you want me to make from it. And of course, look at that shirt. This is the process tee. It just came in for me today. It's got forged on the right hand sleeve with my touch mark. The process tee is the hand tool knife and it has the process every step of the way, every success, every failure described in the text. This is an awesome, awesome shirt. We've got it in 100% cotton work shirt like this. We've also got premium tees which are a little softer. I would be seriously thrilled if you would head on over to the website and grab yourself some merch. And of course, hit subscribe if you're new, because I'm going to be seeing you tomorrow on the next episode. Bye-bye.